Right now, REITs are still priced at near their lowest valuations in a decade, but I think that the window of opportunity is closing here. That's because interest rates are expected to go to lower levels later this year, and this should serve as a strong catalyst for the entire REIT sector. After all, the only reason why REITs crashed in 2022 and 2023 was the surge in interest rates, and therefore a decline in interest rates should have the opposite effect. In fact, this has already started with REITs rising by about 20% in recent months. But I think that this is still just the beginning. There are a lot of REITs that are still priced at 30, 40, 50% discounts to their recent peers. And in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about three of my favorite buys for 2024. Hey everyone, this is Yossi. I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about three of my favorite real estate investment trusts to buy today. But before I get into it, I want to remind you that we are currently still running a New Year's sale for REIT newsletter, High Yield Landlord. So if you want to access my entire real money REIT portfolio, now is a great time to join us for a two-week free trial. You won't be charged anything in the first 14 days. So if you want to come just for that period to access my portfolio and then cancel, that's perfectly fine with me. And if you then decide to stick around to access all of our research, you'll get a deeply discounted rate. So the first read that I want to discuss here is called Healthcare Realty. Its sticker symbol is HR. This is the biggest REIT that specializes in medical office buildings. It has guided for roughly 5% annual FFO per share growth in the coming years. It has an investment grade rated balance sheet and yet its share price is down about 40% of its highs. Interestingly, the discount here is similar to that of office REITs like SL Green and Boston Properties. And so it seems like the market is pricing healthcare realty as if it was just another office landlord. However, medical office buildings are actually far more resilient than traditional office buildings. Yes, it is true that telemedicine has also made a lot of progress in recent years, but in most cases, doctors will still be at their medical office buildings even when doing remote consultations. Moreover, it just isn't possible to do everything remotely here. If you're a doctor, you will still have to eventually see your patient in person to assess them and do various tests. And I'm especially not worried about the portfolio of healthcare realty because it owns mostly class A medical office buildings that are located in medical clusters of rapidly growing Sunbelt markets. Medical clusters enjoy significant barriers to entry which should limit the competition from new supply and the rapid population growth of the Sunbelt markets coupled with the aging population should be strong catalysts that result in a boost in demand over the long run. For these reasons, healthcare realty has guided for steady growth in the coming years, with its occupancy rate continuing to rise. But the market doesn't seem to be listening to the conference calls of the REIT as it has priced it as just another office landlord. I think that as healthcare realty continues to prove the market wrong and interest rates return to lower levels later this year, the company will reprice at a much higher valuation. Today, the shares trade at just around 10 times FFO. They offer a 7.3% dividend yield. And I think that the upside potential in the coming years could be up to 50%. Before I go into the second company, if you're enjoying this content, could you please do me a huge favor and click the like button that will really help me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much in advance. Then the second company I want to highlight here is called Bonovia. Its ticker symbol is V and A. We bought a lot of shares of this company which was trading at around 15 to 20 euros per share. To date, has already recovered to around 28 euros per share, and despite that, it still remains heavily discounted. In case you're not familiar with Vonovia, this is the biggest landlord of Europe, owning roughly half a million apartment units, mostly in Germany, Sweden, and Austria. To date, its net asset value per share is around 50 euros per share, and historically, it has traded at the 10% premium to its net asset value during most time. Therefore, under normal circumstances, you would expect Vonovia to trade at about 55 euros per share, and yet today it's still priced at just about half of that. But I think that the window of opportunity is closing here. The only reason why the company's valuation ever got so low is because the market got worried about the company's ability to handle its debt maturities following the surge in interest rates. But things have changed very drastically in recent months. Firstly, Vonovia sold a bunch of assets to pay off near-term debt maturities, and these sales also happened at near its net asset value. Secondly, the direction of interest rates changed drastically, and now significant cuts are expected already this year, and more in 2025. And then thirdly, the transaction market in Germany has recovered, and property prices are even expected to rise in 2024. We have argued all along that the market was overreacting given that Bonovia has a triple B plus investment grade rating, significant liquidity, and has been able to sell assets in the past to handle its debt maturities. 
The market is now slowly coming to the same conclusion and Bonovia's share price has begun to recover, but there's still nearly 100% upside potential to reach its historic valuation. I don't expect it to get back there anytime soon, but as interest rates now return to lower levels and Bonovia's net asset value starts to appreciate again, I expect a lot of investors to rush right back into Bonovia. While you wait to earning a 9% cash flow yield, out of which about one third is paid in dividend and the other two thirds are reinvested in growth and deleveraging. And then the third REIT is Whitestone REIT, ticker symbol WSR. This is a small cap REIT that specializes in service oriented strip centers in rapidly growing Sunbelt markets like Phoenix and Austin. The interesting thing about these retail properties is that they are benefiting from the rapid population growth of these Sunbelt markets, but unlike other property sectors like apartment communities, there hasn't been much new supply of retail space. This puts Whitestone in a strong position to keep growing its rents, especially since its current rents are already deeply below market. In recent quarters, it has consistently enjoyed 15% plus releasing spreads, and that's on top of the 3% annual rent escalations that it has in its leases. As a result, the rent growth of Whitestone has been some of the fastest in its entire property sector in recent years. But despite that, its valuation is still one of the lowest in its sector. Its FFO multiple is just around 11 times, and in comparison, REITs like Federal Realty Trust or Regency Centers are trading at closer to 17 times but I think that this discount will close down in the coming years. That's because the reasons why the market is discounting Whitestone are only temporary. The first reason why Whitestone is today discounted is because it has been defending a lawsuit from its former CEO who was fired a few years back for cause. This led to significant legal expenses for Whitestone, but the good news is that just recently they announced that they had won their case in court. Then the second reason why White Sound is discounted is because it has a bit more leverage than most of its peers. However, the REIT is rapidly deleveraging and once you remove these legal fees, its leverage will come down quite significantly. I think that a few years from now, Whitestone will have a far stronger balance sheet and the market will have forgotten about this recent drama with its former CEO and this will then lead to a higher valuation multiple. Simply returning to its net asset value would unlock about 30% upside from here and while you wait you're earning a roughly 9% cash flow yield out of which about half is paid in dividends and the other half is reinvested in growth and deleveraging. The REIT market has now begun its recovery but it still has a long way to go. These three REITs are still heavily discounted but there are many other similar examples in the REIT sector. If you want to access my entire REIT portfolio feel free to join High Yield Landlord which is my REIT newsletter for a two week free trial. It will give you instant access to all of my holdings and you won't be charged anything in the first 14 days. And then finally, if you could please do me a huge favor and click the like button, that really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for all your support and share my next one. Bye-bye.